Okay guys, so we changed up the split a little bit and we're here today to do hamstrings. We're back after yesterday's arm day, feeling pretty good but we've changed the split and today is hamstrings. Now the reason we did that is just to get more width and thickness in our legs. I feel like we've lost a little bit of size over time. So you have to prioritize the things that you want to grow. So we've kind of changed things around. So today's hamstrings, normally we start with a lying leg curl, which we're gonna start with again, but today we're gonna do a little something a little different. We're just gonna do one leg at a time. It's gonna help us isolate even further. Uh, I've had a tear in this hamstring, so it won't be as strong. So this will help kind of help balance out those imbalances and help us isolate each hamstring by itself so they're not helping each other. The, that way the weaker one will stay weak and the stronger one will just get stronger. If we split them up, we'll, we can focus on each one individually. So we're gonna start that now. Much better. So, same rules are gonna apply as when you do double leg. You're gonna lift and then you're gonna, as you come to the top, you're gonna lift your knee off the pad. So it's a little harder because you're going one leg at a time. You might feel it more in your glute. So ladies, if you're trying to work your glutes, this is probably a better way to do that. But you're gonna come up with the heel and then as you get halfway up maybe, start lifting that knee and go all the way over. Other than that, it's pretty simple, really. We're not, we're just, what we're trying to do mainly is focus on not lifting our butt. So by lifting your knee off the pad, it will keep your butt down. So, a couple years ago now, I had a pretty severe tear in this hamstring here. And um, you can see the difference in strength. And that's why it's important to do these single leg things sometimes. Because when I do double, I can do 100 pounds, no problem, but it's all the right leg, mostly. I mean, you can see when I do right leg, I can do 15, no problem. Left leg, I can do five. So don't always stick to the same stuff. Sometimes you gotta do stuff that's uncomfortable, doesn't feel good, but it could be making you better at the same time. All right, so the one-legged leg curl was kind of like a warm-up. It wasn't a warm-up, we felt it, but it was kind of like to get everything activated. I wanted to focus today on some more compound stuff because I'm really trying to build the thickness of my legs. Not that you're not gonna build thickness with lying leg curls, but I always felt like the compound movements is where the real thickness comes into play. So today I want to focus on these two machines. The Smith machine, Stiff like deadlifts, you can do these with a barbell, you can do these with a dumbbell, whatever makes you feel comfortable. For me, I don't want to focus on balance, I just want to focus on lift. So I like the Smith machine, plus I can hook up the bands to it. It's all very stable. 
We're gonna move from here to the glute ham raise. I'll describe that when we get to it. But for now, the main thing here, you wanna lift with your hip, your hamstrings and not your lower back. So if you're hinging, you wanna hinge from the hip, which means when you bend over, if your back is straight, you can only bend so far. So like this is the furthest I can go with my back straight. If I wanna go further, I have to bend my back. So I'll have to do this. We're not trying to bend our back. We're just trying to bend our hamstrings. So go as low as your back will let you without having to round it. On the way up, you're kind of doing the opposite. So I picture myself rolling my body up. So on the way up, you're kind of tucking your butt under and that will help you contract the hamstrings and keep your lower back from doing the work. So I kind of almost drop my head, roll my shoulders forward and lift this way. If you do it the other way, if you tilt your head back and lift like this, you're gonna end up using a lot of lower back. So one way to help is imagine yourself, you got a broomstick through your hips. There's a broomstick kind of going all the way through and you just swivel from the hip only. If you round your back on the way up, be careful, don't do it with heavy weight. We're only using the plate here, it's not heavy. But if you round your back on the way up, you take your back out of the movement and now your hamstrings and glutes have to lift you up. That's kind of the keys you're looking for. If you're wondering why we're standing on a box, it's because I want to be able to get low enough, but I don't want to hit the Smith machine pegs. That will stop me from standing on the floor. So we're not just standing on a box for some dumb effect. I want to be able to come down and have the, the bar come down with me without hitting the stoppers. Second thing is, I like to keep my feet together. Okay, if you do these wide, they will work. You're going to build more adductor, you're gonna use more hip. If you're trying to build more hamstring and focus only on the hamstring, try and keep your feet together. I have about you know an inch or two, an inch or two apart in my feet. The last thing we did was to make it a little bit even more intense. We have the bands. What the bands do when attached from the bottom is they're gonna increase the intensity as we go through the motion. So at the bottom you see the bands kind of release, there's no tension. As we go up, into the strength curve, the bands tense up and give us more resistance. So adding all these little principles is gonna help make the movement harder than just if you're doing it just regularly, okay? So these are little things you're gonna learn and the trainer hopefully to put into your own workouts that'll help you make regular exercises even harder than they, than they normally are. Moving from the stiff leg to the glute ham raise. This is probably one of the most awkward machines to get into, so you guys are gonna have a nice laugh watching me get in and out of this thing, but it's worth it. Because in my opinion, this is probably the best hamstring builder of all hamstring exercises. This and stiff legs together are what's gonna build the meat uh, in your hamstrings. Uh, it's not really easy to cheat here. If you wanna be really, really strict, you keep your body straight. My hamstrings aren't strong enough for that. I'm really top heavy. So I have to kind of stick my butt out a little bit. But even if you stick your butt out a little bit, as you'll see when I do it, you're still gonna get a lot of hamstring activation. So it's okay. The weights here, the more, in this instance, in this machine, the more you put on, the worse it is. The more you put on, the weaker you are. And as you see here, I have three and a quarter on there, which means my hamstrings are not the strongest. I also weigh a lot, so I need this counterweight so that when I come down with this bar, I don't crash on my face. That's what this is, it's gonna be a counterweight. It's almost like doing an assisted chin up. So I'm just gonna show it to you guys. You kind of see what I mean as I go through it. If you're not 
strong enough. Don't put your arms over the pad. Put them under. All right, so you guys can see as I was doing it, I was kind of bent over almost, had my butt sticking out. But I'm telling you, even with that angle of movement, the hamstring is just getting fried. Now, if you're super strong in the hamstrings, or if you have a really good technique here, you can stretch your body out and just go straight up and straight down without having to bend your butt back. Paul's a little stronger than I am here, so you can see he doesn't have his butt sticking out as far. His body's a little more straight up and down. So you kind of kind of have set this for your strength. Um, it's kind of like training wheels, okay? Now, if you don't have this machine, you can still do it. A lot of guys I see will hook their feet uh, into a seated calf bench, like reverse, and they'll use a broomstick to like hold themselves up from falling on their face. A little more complex, doesn't feel as good. If you have a gym in your area that has this machine, try this one out. All right, if you have access to this machine, this setting down here that pulls these two things apart, makes it longer. The further the stretch in these two things, the harder it's gonna be. So if you wanna make it easier on yourself, keep this bench closer to where your knees go. That way everything's more compact. You have more control over it. If it stretches you out, all hamstrings, which is better which is better for building muscle, but if you're not strong enough, then you're just not gonna be able to do it. Can I explain to him what's going on? So you keep it pointed here. So what we did was we decided to leave it stretched out to stretch out your body more, to hit the hamstrings more. We don't wanna, it's not cheating. You can still keep it compact and feel it, but we feel like to do it the best way possible, you gotta stretch your body out, tuck your butt in as much as you can. So that's what he's doing, but, but to do that, because we're not strong enough, we're a little top heavy, we have to add another plate. So now instead of three and a quarter, we have four plates on the counterweight, but it's allowing him to do it properly, which is probably gonna build his hamstrings faster. So drop the ego, do it right. Motherfucker. I can't do a stretch out, man. Fuck. What your ass told me. Uh. 
You guys notice we're having trouble with it because it's something we're both trying to get better at, but just for the range, you guys notice we're going all the way down, but we're not going all the way to the very top. Once you pass about this point here, it, you lose the tension. So we're kind of going all the way down and then two thirds or three quarters on the way up and then coming back. That way we can keep the tension on the hamstring because once he gets about there, you kind of start to lose it. So he's not going all the way to the top. Fuck. All right, so we're finishing up hamstrings with a superset. We're squatting. Now, a lot of people think of squats as a quad movement, but actually it's a lot of hamstring. When you're dropping, the negative portion of a squat is a lot of hamstrings. So to, to get a little blood in the quad, but not actually focus on training it. We're doing squats, but we're focusing on the negative. So we're trying to do a five second drop. So five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. Then drop, touch the pad at the bottom, and then shoot up explosively. Do 10 reps, 12 reps there. After that, we come over to the sled. I'm not trying to race down the track. This is not, we're not doing obstacle horse shit. We're not Navy SEALs, okay? I'm just trying to feel the muscle. So every rep is a rep. So I'm taking one step at a time and trying to like make sure I feel the muscle working. This is not, it's not a race to see how fast you can get there and get faster you can get back. This is not that kind of shit. So when you do the sled, you're just pushing one foot at a time and just think of them as each rep, almost like a lunge. Let's see, that's it. Just squeeze each muscle, there you go. I'm not trying to blast through it. You can go a little faster than that, but just each rep is a rep. Make sure each rep is a rep. You feel everything in bodybuilding comes back to feeling. If you're just running down here, your muscles are gonna work, but you're gonna get to a point where just making your muscles work is not enough. You have to consciously make sure every fi fiber is firing. And we do that by slowly, methodically moving through the paces and feeling the muscle work. That's what's gonna build the muscle. After you, the first 50% of your growth, first year, first two years of training, you can fucking do anything. Your body's gonna develop. But after that, you're gonna start to hit plateaus and that's where these little things like rep speed and Feeling matter, and that's what we're doing today.
Ten. All right, guys, that's a, that's a good hamstring day. And we got a little bit of a quad pump at the end, which is what we want. We just want to get a little bit of blood flowing in the quad, mostly tax the hamstrings. We, the way the workout was set up, it went easiest to hardest. And I like it that way because you get more out of the muscle, number one, and you ward off, you prevent any injuries because we did some like, lighter warm-up style or isolation stuff to kind of get the hamstrings activated. And then we went to the compound stuff from there. And uh, it's just a good way to start things. It's just sometimes you jump right into the compound movements, you get going too heavy, that's when tears and things like that occur. So, um, but it's not only just for injury purposes, it's, I feel like when you get an, a muscle activated first and then come into your compounds, you get more out of them. So that's what we did today. So. Tomorrow's the day off, take a rest. We'll come back the day after. Tomorrow's also a cheat meal. Not a binge meal, just a cheat meal. But we'll get back the day after and uh, another week, another chance to grow, another chance to get big, another chance to get better. Let's keep the off season rolling. We'll see you guys in a couple days.